was all good just a week ago. It's funny what seven days could change. Oh, wait, what's going on, man? You already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life and we're back. I love my life. Happy 4th to everybody. Hope everybody had a great day yesterday and everybody stayed safe. Please pray for anybody that lost a family member. Pray for, pray for the people out in Illinois that got shot up. And pray that that boy that uh that did that gets what he's got coming to him. With all that being said, man, I was thinking this morning, just because, you know, I, I tell y'all this. I'm, I'm a thinker. I think a lot. I, th I think I think a whole lot, right? So I was thinking back on the little gang member dudes, man. These dudes, because they played such a, a major role in the prison systems, right? And it was like almost... Like 90% of the time or something was going on in there, it was because something these little dudes had gotten themselves wrapped up in or, you know, something petty. Like the, the guard will call one of them a straight clown or whatever, they won't do nothing, but then they'll go beat some other dude up over a soup or something, right? But I was thinking back on different times, man. I seen these, these little dudes, and some of them weren't little, but I seen these dudes get dealt with. And there wasn't nothing that gang could do to help them. We're gonna speak on that today, man. To me, I'm not gonna lie. Them dudes made prison so much harder than it had to be, and they messed it up for everybody else. So I know y'all ain't gonna like what I'm gonna say, but in the moments of seeing some of them dudes and hearing some of them dudes have to deal with what they had caused, and somebody grab a hold of their ass, and their little gang gang buddies can't get to help them, it was kind of pleasurable. Knowing that he's up there just having the room demolished with his body. And that his little mouth, he's, he's used to running. Ain't doing a whole lot of running no more. Yeah, those are good days, man. So that's what we're doing today, man. When your gang can't save you. When, you, when your mouth started to, to write a check that that ass can't cash. Gang, gang. Everybody's a gangster till a gangster shows up. That's today's video, man. When your gang can't save you. But anyways, you know how to seen it, you know how to lived it, so <laughs> let's relive it. Man, this shirt ain't doing me no justice, man. This shirt's making me look all snug today, man. Look all shirt looking all tight like I'm tiny or something. I can't even get my swole on in this shirt, man. Damn. <laughs> so let me break down some different types of gang members to you, right? Because everybody's just under the impression that these dudes are like tough guys, that everybody. If you're in a gang, you're automatically a savage. No. You got the indigent gang member. Let me tell you what the indigent gang member is, right? He's the dude that prior to joining the gang. Oh, orphan dog. Since then, I've been committing me some robbery with Iron Man. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. State toothpaste, which means the state gave it to him for free. State shampoo. Anything I say state means the institution supplied it. State shampoo. The worst deodorant in the world is this, this little roll-on deodorant. They give him a certain amount of stamped envelopes every week. Dude's oh. doing bad. It's the same dude that goes to the chow hall and takes a piece of cornbread or bread, wraps it up in a napkin and puts it in his shirt, right? Same dude that's walking around picking cigarette butts up off the ground on the wreck yard, busting them open and making roll-ups, right? It's that guy. He'll join a gang. Now he's he's somebody. Now he's got some soups, right? And guys let the soups, the sodas, the chips, things like that get to their head. You got a bunch of gas station food. The stuff that we look past in our cabinets. You know, when you open the cabinets and that's all you see, you be like, damn, I ain't got no food. Well, in prison, that, that same stuff that we look past, if you got a whole bunch of that, you the man. So with the indigent dudes, they know. Man, don't nobody in the real world like me, man. Mama ain't rocking with me. Daddy ain't rocking with me. I ain't got no friends. I ain't seen a single money slip from the streets. I'm messed up in here. Mmm. Look at the gang over there. They at the table. Damn, they eating good. He's watching. His stomach's rumbling. Damn, they done made a pizza. Chili bowls. Damn, what? Got summer sausage on it, man. I love summer sausage. You know what? I'm gonna take that ass whooping. I'll take that ass whooping to be able to eat like them. Next thing you know, they in the cell. Ah, ah, ah. Getting punched all in their shit. Bang, bang, bang. Binged all up. 
<laughs> then you see them next week and they out there sitting at the table with their bowl and their spoon, right? Now the little gang's gonna take care of them. So, oh, they got them some real, some real toothpaste, but they ain't got the Colgate. They got the poops of them. I mean, Pepsi them. Now they starting to gain things, right? Because they're part of the gang. So the gang's gonna look after him. Even the weakest man in the in the gang, they're gonna make sure he eats, right? They got to. They gotta show everybody else we take care of our own. I think that indigent was probably my favorite. Then you got the church mouse. Let me tell you who the church mouse is. He's the guy that he's in the pod. He don't make no noise. He's real quiet. You can pretty much say whatever you want, do whatever you want. He ain't gonna do nothing, right? But moment he becomes gang gang uh, man he's the loudest dude in this room he's got his chest poked out talking crazy to dudes that under normal circumstances he wouldn't even look at twice mr church mouse i've seen those guys get jammed up and get sent away and then come to a different part of the prison quite a while later some times passed and they not know nobody there and they have to try to figure out it who in there, if any of these guys are part of the same gang as them, they're real, real quiet, back to church mouth status. I'm not saying nothing. But soon as they find out some of these guys are in the same gang as them, they back there making the most noise, talking crazy to people again, because, I mean, that's easy to do when you got a whole entire gang behind you, right? It's easy to do when you know they will come to your rescue. Gotta love the church mouse, man. Then you got the dudes that pick with everybody. You got the gang member dude that has constantly got his gang at war. The stupid dude, the dummy that just, he can't do nothing right. Everything he does results in his gang either whooping his ass or whooping his homeboy's ass or them beefing with somebody else. People are constantly getting locked up and sent to the hole. People are constantly getting shipped. This guy has just got his gang at all given moments and times wrapped up in a bunch of stupidity for nothing he might loan somebody something and they know he's an idiot I'm not paying you back you a chump what ah, now his whole gang's all riled up they go over there jump that man now they're all being sent off to different prisons they're all going to the hole everybody's going away because this dummy just got bucked on for three suits you're gonna meet so many different type of gang members man you got the dudes that are constantly you know, trying to preach that, that gang shit to other people and recruit people and bring people home. You got enforcers who just feel like it's their job to inflict pain on their own gang or to go out and inflict pain on the next man because of their gang. You got your crash test dummies who they wind up teeter-totters. And they teeter-tot right over that pink and get knocked over, get up, they wind them up again. And they teeter-tot right over that pink and get knocked over. Every now and then they might win one, but they just keep getting knocked over, knocked over, knocked over. The gang just sits back like, it's got to be the dumbest son bitch I ever met in my life. That's another one of my favorites. It's the crash test dummies, right? It is a humbling and satisfactory feeling when you see one of those dudes that does this all day, that is always causing problems he has played a major part in you being locked in your cell. It's a great feeling. You just have to live it, man. If you've ever been locked in your cell or in a cell or in a room for two weeks straight behind the actions of somebody else, behind something you got absolutely nothing to do with, watch friends of yours get caught with things they shouldn't have and get shipped off all because of this dude's actions. Watch dudes get jammed up and sent to the hole all because of this dude's actions. Missed visits you're supposed to get. Can't make moves you were supposed to make. The other buildings are out on the yard. You're looking out your window. It's summertime. Damn, it looks nice out there. Now you locked in here because of this dummy. Let me tell you, on the day that somebody grabs a hold of him and just commences to beating him like the little sock puppet he is, it's a good feeling. It's great if you can, if you see it, like if you see it firsthand, it's like, ah, this is one of those things I wish I had a camera for. I would have loved to record this and on my saddest days replayed it. I love to just watch this over a hundred million times, but all you can do is replay it in your mind. 
Then you got those moments where you hit them boys in the cell, somebody grabbed the hold of one of them and gets to wearing that ass out and all that killer gorilla gangster talk goes out the window and it goes from rah, 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 screaming for help, calling out for his gang and his homeboys at the door. Oh, yo, you all right? What you doing up there? Uh, That's the story I'm going to share with y'all first, man. Y'all going to love this. So let's get into it. I hate when I can't remember somebody's name, but I can remember the people around them. I remember my homeboy, Silver Chain. I think I've talked about Silver Chain before from Hopewell, Virginia. Tall ass, light skinned, you know, bald headed dude. Silver Chain, they called him Silver Chain because he had a silver chain with a cross on it. That was his nickname, Silver Chain. He also worked maintenance. He's great with electronics. Could fix anything, right? He used to have a semi. I talked, I'm pretty sure I, I spoke on Silver Chain where. Dude accidentally, Silver Chain had a fake front, right? His teeth were fake. And he had he used to at night before he would go to sleep, he would ball it up in a piece of paper and lay it on the counter. And I think I told the story where his celly took the teeth and threw them away thinking it was trash, right? So it was a whole big ordeal. Silver Chain had to roll around for a while with no front teeth. He didn't want to talk. And these two dudes, these two dudes are great to talk about. I remember them because they hung out with this dude that the story is based around. This dude also hung out with a guy down in nine building that was the like captain of the softball team. Yeah, we had captains like on the softball teams in prison and it was the coolest old dude. I got to talk on him one time one day, but his name was Papa J. Y'all, anybody that was up Greensville, been in the penitentiary of Virginia, knows Papa J, man. Papa J was dripped out. Uh, swag is still a word. He was swagged out. That man had crazy, crazy swag to be an old head. Like he just, he was fresh, man. You knew that when that man was on the streets, which was probably 40 years ago, that he was the man. Well, they kicked it with this other tall, light-skinned dude that had the nice hair. I'm talking about the hair that stayed spinning. This guy had to be every bit of 60, if not a little bit older. But men that have stuck to a strict regimen in prison, that have eaten healthy, that have worked out, that have taken care of themselves at 60 years old, you wouldn't know they're 60. You, know, you just, you wouldn't. You see them without their shirts on. They got the pecs. They got the six pack and the abs. And, you know, they got the muscles sitting on top of muscles where muscles ain't supposed to be. Muscles on the side of the neck and shit. But they're slim and cut down at the same time. That was a lot of the. When it coming to the older guys, you got the really out of shape guy. Very common. Eats honey buns, niggas, drinks coffee all day. Smokes about 50 rolled up cigarettes a day. Then you got the super bulky power lifter over here who just can get out there, ain't lift weights in three years and go straight out there and just bench 425 like it's nothing just to show you, look, young, this is how you do it. With a cigarette hanging out of his mouth and his old school penitentiary glasses on. And then you got the dude that just cut up like a bag of dope. The old head that, the, I seen this dude, this dude one time was doing pull-ups. You know how you do your pull-ups? This dude would pull up and then push straight out and put his legs out in front of him. He actually taught me how to do them, right? He also had to do, taught me how to do the Superman's and pull up over the bar, right? I can't remember the dude's name. I just remember he was tall, light-skinned, and had really nice hair and was cut the hell up. We have a whole bunch of like just stupid gang stuff going on in our pod at all given moments, and 99.9% .9 of the time when they would get to beefing, it would be amongst themselves. Like Every now and then, they would go to war with somebody else. Every now and then, this gang member, this gang member would end up getting into it, and then there'd be a whole bunch of violations behind them fighting, meaning their gang would get mad at him for what he did, and their gang get mad at him for what they did. So these two dudes are fighting. Now they got to go back to the gang and get beat up some more, right? <laughs> Stupid. So there's this one dude in general, right? And I'm not even going to talk about the gang that he was from, but he's always starting stuff. He's always got something going on. His gang stays in the middle of something because of him, because of his mouth. He likes to disrespect people and try to throw his authority around and use his gang like that, like that's a 357 or something, like they're a shotgun, like, it, like his gang is ready to go off at any moment. And he's done been violated several times just because he does dumb things. He makes deals with people that are stupid that causes his gang to get to beefing with them. So they're gonna handle the beef and they're gonna handle him, right? But well, this dude also had a mouth on him. So he would get to arguing and he would not shut up when he got to arguing. He would make you just want to take the big flying emoji hand and just 
open hand slapping. This dude argues with everybody. I don't care what it's over. It can be over the menu. It can be over if we're having wreck today. It can be over what we had three days ago to eat. It can be over who the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys was in 1988. This dude's the know it on argues with everybody, right? He gets to argue with another gang member one day, and I'm not 100% sure. I kind of remember why, but I'm not going to get into it because I don't fully remember. He gets to argue with another gang member from another gang one day. At this point, we didn't have no lead gang members in our in our pod. We just had a bunch of little, little, little gang dudes, but they didn't have no leader in there. Their leader was not Bill Masada's. So when they were on the yard, they all fell into line. But when they was in the party, he wasn't around. They just ran around just being stupid, disrespectful, making a lot of noise, jumping people, stealing stuff, calling themselves extorting people, right? Dumb stuff. This little dude gets to arguing with another gang member one dude, somebody that's part of an entirely different gang, at which point dude's homeboys ain't feeling him and tell him pretty much, they wouldn't go upside his head. We'll beat your ass. There's a lot more of them than there is this dude and his homeboys, right? The guard several times comes over the loudspeaker there in the back, right? And she can see it's going to pop off. She tells him, I see y'all. I know wherever one of y'all sleep, y'all do something if y'all want to. You're all going to the hole. He would walk off. But as he walk off, he would still keep talking shit. And people would, well, what, what? And he'd turn around and go back. And she come over the microphone again. Hey, I'm down to break it up. Y'all need to disperse, disperse. She gets tired of it and tells him, Lock in your cell. He's the one you can see. He's got a couple of his homeboys. They more or less just trying to make sure he don't get jumped. She gets tired of it, tells him, go lock in your cell. There he goes. Right up the staircase. Busts a left, heads towards the showers. Boom. Turns through the cell. She opens his door. He goes in. She closes the door behind him. The dude I was telling you about again in the tall, you know, skinny, light-skinned dude with the nice hair. This was an old school dude. This dude worked in the chow hall. Didn't bother nobody. Very respectful. Worked out a lot. You would always see him doing push-ups. He'd have the deck of cards, doing diamonds, widespread, in close. Working out was his thing. He stayed war ready. Not somebody you want to try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. His stamina was crazy. His endurance was crazy. He's going to beat the hell out of you if, you if that's what you want to do, right? One of the dudes you just got to try to catch and knock out with the first one because if it goes round for round, I don't care what you got going on. He's going to get you in the long run. This old head don't bother nobody. Everybody knows of the dude. Knows he's been down a long time. You can look at his boots, the way he creases his pants, his shirts, the way he presents himself, the way he stays out the way. He's a convict. You know that man has been locked up longer than that man has been alive, right? They just so happen to share a cell together. I've seen him, heard him. Other people had heard him in the past tell him, Stop causing all this commotion, man. Because you eventually going to have it up at the cell. And at the moment the dudes start coming up to the cell, that's my house. That's where I live at. You and all your gang activities going to spill over into my life. And when it does, me and you going to have problems. Oh, I got it. I got it. Oh, hey, we good now. Nah, ain't no old head. The moment it spills over to my lane or somebody comes up in the cell, you start having dudes come to the cell with all that rah-rah you got going on. We're going to have problems. He wouldn't say nothing to old head. Oh, I got you, I understand, my bad, my bad, cop, please, right? Guard tells him, go lock in your cell, so he locks in a cell. Meanwhile, the dudes that he just got to argue with, they still congregated out in the pot. He's uh, at the door, bah, running his mouth, still running his mouth. Old head sitting down there with the other old heads at the bench, looking up at the cell. Sees the young one up there making all this noise. Looks over, got a whole nother entire gang that, that that door was open, would go up in there and beat dude's ass and well then they're gonna have to deal with old head when it's over with but old head's gonna deal with the young because the young is the one that's bringing all the chaos to the cell right dudes that this this young boy's arguing with start going up the staircase and going to the cell and they at the door going back and forth with him he ain't close enough to the door where anybody can reach in and hit him but he's in there man if this door was open i swear to god we go in the yard i holler at my homeboys and them we go da 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 Meanwhile, you got old head just sitting down in the pod looking up at the door. He done warned the young boy, done told the young boy, listen to them old heads, man. Them dudes are some of the most dangerous guys at times. He's watching all this transpire at the door, watching it, watching it, watching it. We're out in the day room just doing what we do. A couple hours goes by, this dude has stayed up there, kicking the door, yelling out the door. His other homeboys keep going up there, man, what are you doing, bro? You drawing, you snatching, man. You going to get us all jammed up. Homie gonna stomp you out when he hears about this. Like, you gonna get violated. You stay starting crap. 
they call lockdown. We all go in ourselves. You got your housemen out there sweeping the floor. You got your housemen out there with their mops. They finish that up, they take all the cleaning supplies, put them inside the closet. Twin was my cellmate at the time. I just want to tell you about this. So we're sitting in the cell, we talk about it. And I said, man, old head looked super irritated with what was going on with the young boy, right? He's like, man, I've been doing time with dude for a long time. Dude ain't the one to play with. Like, guys know about him and know what he'll do. Look, this is no no lie. We're sitting there, we're watching TV, and we're just talking amongst ourselves. And then all of a sudden you hear, what you saying then? So we both get up, go over to the door, because we already, we done watched all this play out all night, so we know where it's coming from. We look up, and all you can see is the young boy's back, and he's, like, backed up towards the door, and you can hear his cellmate, the old dude that really don't cause no problems, don't bother nobody, stays out the way, he's a convict, minds his own, knows how to do his time, but he done told this boy about drawing all the attention to the cell. The guard done staring up at the cell. Now, if this man's got anything in the cell, it's jeopardized because of what this little young gang dude has got going on. Now they might come up in here and shake it down. Now they might make it their business every time they walk by to look in this old man's cell because of what the young boy's doing. So what you saying then? You don't hear nothing. Nothing out the little gang dude. We're looking up at the door and it was almost like, like a special effects crew came in. At one moment you seen dude standing there, the next moment you just say, whoop, and his whole body just shift to where there was nothing in front of the door. Then every now and then you heard all this banging, slamming, commotion, and scuffling. Every now and then you'd see his body fly past the view of the door, and then his body fly past the view of the door. And that old man had that young boy up there by his shirt and was just slinging it. Boom! Not hitting him, not giving him the one twos, just letting him see how strong he was. Just had him wrapped up. Boom, boom, slammed him off the walls, slammed him off the floor, off the sides of the sink, off the sides of the wall when he was done with him. Boom, threw him down on the floor, right? All I can think is when the guards come through, they're gonna see this young boy messed up, they're gonna lock him up, right? They're gonna lock the old head up. They come through that morning, 5.30 count. I work the maintenance, so I gotta get up, I gotta go eat. When we come back count, you know, it's clear, and I go out with first movement. I see dudes sliding in our pod that morning that are part of that boy's gang. And I'm thinking, at first, all right, I guess they got beef with the other gang. Nah. They came in and kind of chopped it up with the old head for a minute, asking what happened. I guess when the boys went to chow that morning, they told them, yo, such and such got beat up by a celly last night. And then started stuff with the other gangs and whatnot. And uh, was running his mouth, got locked in his cell. Kept drawing attention, the old head snapped out last night and balled him up and they beat him up, right? So they come in, I guess they think they're gonna put pressure on the old man. The old man stands up on him, like tall ass dude too, real tall, probably them long ass arms stands up on him, like, what's up? And they like, look, it ain't even, we ain't even on that time. We ain't even come over here to beef with you. We come over here just to ask you what happened. He goes and tells them. I told the boy to stop drawing attention to the cell. That's my house. I got to be here to the day I die. This is my house. He's just a guest in my house. He's always doing things to get the guards up there. The guards shaking through there. Tearing my stuff up because of stupid stuff he got going on. So I beat his ass last night. They talked to him for a little bit more than they asked him. You can get mad if we go up in the cell and holler at him real quick. Care what y'all do. Just don't, you better not, don't break nothing to mind. Don't, nothing on the count of mine better even be moved. Y'all do whatever y'all want. Don't touch none of my shit. This boy couldn't even go to chow that morning because his head's all knotted up for where a dude done played Donkey Kong, whack-a-mole, ping-pong with his head off the sides of the walls and the doors, right? And you can see the young boy standing in the doorway looking out, like trying to figure out, all right, are my homeboys and them about to, about to bank the old head? Are they about to get into it with the other gang we, that I was arguing with last night? Oh, no. Oh, they coming up here. Damn, they all got boots on. Are they coming up here to violate me? They went right up in the cell, told him, hit the button. And in the cells this time, there was a button on the wall that if there was cell break or it was daytime movement and you could come in and out of your cell, you could push the button and the door would open. Push the button on the wall. He's in the cell, he won't push the button. If he don't push the button, they can't get the door. And these dudes are doing what's called 229, means unauthorized area. Just them coming in our pod for another pod can get them all locked up, putting the hole for being in the part of the building they're not supposed to be in. They done slid from over there and over here to handle this business, right? 
dude will not open that door. Mm -mm. I don't know if he planned on checking in, was going to wait for an officer to come by or what. But the next thing you know, you see the door slide open. I look over and the old head don't went to the control booth and say, hey, yeah, pop cell 125, man. Open my cell. And over the cell, you see the dudes running there. Boom, 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 boom. Get to beating him up. One of the dudes pushes the button and the door slides back closed. And all you can see is the commotion of different bodies moving around in the cell. You can hear the young boy screaming, hollering, getting his ass up. You got to think, he's already got knots, cantaloupes on the side of his head. Well, oh, here's done. Ricochet him all over the cell and just, you know. And now the following morning, he wakes up to his homeboys coming in the cell to violate him for what he had done the night before. Because if not, now they got to go to war with this game behind what this little dummy has said. He takes that ass whooping, gets all beat up. The old head told him, you can't be in my cell no more. That's just what it is. Ain't no more open cells in the pod. What I'm supposed to do? Care what you do. You're not staying in this cell. You can leave out on your feet or you can leave out on your back. You decide how you leave out. But one way or another, you're getting up out of here today. This ain't how I do my time. The young boy do what we call a swish roll. That's when you put all your stuff in the middle of your mat and you roll it up like a swiss roll. Put all this stuff in the middle of the mat with all these knots all over his head, all over his face, all over the back of his head. Toted the stuff up to the control booth. I don't know what he said to the officer in the booth. But the next thing you know, she popped the door. Dude started yelling stuff at him. Scary ass. Put da da da. And he walked on out the pod, man. Big ups to the old way. If anybody remembers the dude I'm talking about, he kicked it with Silver Chain to Papa J from down in nine building. Tall, light-skinned dude. Old head. 60 plus with the nice waves. Shout his name out in the comments section. That's what happens when your gang can't save your ass. Not only... Can they not save your ass? But who's going to save you from your own gang? Gang, gang. <laughs> I guess you could say the more of the story is, watch your mouth. It's all funny games till you face to face with somebody. It's all funny games until you ain't got nowhere to run. When that door closes, anything goes. All this is going to stop. All this is going to start. You don't never judge a man based on his age, his color, his size, his demeanor. Just because he's quiet don't mean he's weak. He might be quiet for a reason. I was quiet a lot. I like to observe. To this day, the most talking I do is when his camera's on. You talk to people that know me, I'm not a real big talker outside of being on YouTube. But I enjoy what I do. If you're not caught up in none of that, don't get caught up in that. I was about to get into this other story about two brothers I knew that I've been down with a while. They ended up being cellmates. Both got transferred to the same institution. One joined the gang at this institution. One joined the gang at this institution. They put them in a cell together. Some things transpired, and they made these brothers fight each other. Two black dudes from North had to rumble in the cell all behind their gangs. But we'll save that video for another day. For a lot of these guys, man, I can say 100% they joined gangs because of their situation, because of where they were at. A lot of them didn't come out of prison as gang members because they would get violated, X'd out while they were in prison and get thrown out the gang. A lot of guys come home from prison and realize, man, I just want to live a normal life now. I don't want to be part of that no more. I made a mistake by doing that. Key word there, mistake. Use your brain in everything that you do. What you do, you know, Yesterday is going to follow into today. So when you do something today, ask yourself, how is this going to play into my life six months from now? Is it going to have positive or negative results? That's how you should approach situations in life. That's going to tell you if what you're doing is the right thing or the wrong thing. Let me update y'all real quick. Went back into the jail a couple weeks ago. That was a very weird and happy feeling to walk in as a free man to talk to the other guys that were incarcerated to try to give hope look at me i was once in your shoes i've turned my life around july 10th will make eight years this july 10th couple days away is my eight year anniversary of being out of prison man eight years i've stayed out no returns that for me is an achievement it's being locked up is nothing to be proud of, so it's hard to say, well, I'm proud that I haven't been locked up. You shouldn't be getting locked up. There's no trophies for getting locked up. Lock getting locked up is just stupid. Who wants to miss life, miss out on their children growing up, miss out on just everything? 
for anybody that thinks being locked up is cool, for anybody that glorifies penitentiary or prison or jail or any of that, there's like something wrong up here because you weren't happy in those moments of being there. That, I can promise you, I was not happy. At no point in time was I like, yes, this is just great. My son is at home and I'm not there to be his dad. Like I said, going back to the jail was something I really enjoyed. Connecting with the guys was something I really enjoyed. I'm set to go back into the jails again. I'm set to start going into the prisons. I do want to help people. Anyone that says I don't want to help people or that I'm not really helping people, I can promise you this. I've helped that person as well. There's no one that knows me on a one-on-one -on -one level that can say Jay has never helped me. There's not many people that in today's world at some point or another don't need help. I've just been blessed to be in a position at times to help people. I come to realize one of my biggest flaws. Me and my wife talked about this last night. And for you men out there, let me give you some real strong words. Listen to your wives. Times we don't want to believe that what they're saying is true. When it comes to you and your wife, we'll butt heads at times if we don't agree with what they're saying. But if your wife tells you something or she has a feeling, follow what she's saying, man. If she's putting something down, pick it up. There's truth a lot of times in what your wife is going to say. One of my problems in life is, is that I saw bad men in prison be reformed. So it kind of left me with the mind state that inside of all people, there's somebody good. That in some way, y'all see Big Lance? In some way or another, people can be helped. So I feel like I can help people become better people you can't help everybody man. and I'm, I'm coming to learn that it's disturbing because that's all I want to do is help others somebody's down on their luck I'll do what I can that doesn't mean you start hitting me up for money because that's exactly what's going to happen when this video is over I ain't got it I'm telling you now I ain't got it but I try to help people because I think that inside of everybody there's got to be a good person in there at 42 years old, man, I've come to realize a lot of times people are who they are. And there's nothing you can do to help them. And at the end of the day, no matter what you've done for them, what you've given them, advice, money, friendship, loyalty, all that stuff means nothing. At the end of the day, they will bash you. At the end of the day, they will talk bad about you. They will attack your character. When you were the one that was helping them. Like I said, Jay said it best. It was all good just a week ago. This Saturday, we have another community day coming up at Armstrong High School from one to five, just like we did last time. Help me help you. Um, a better day than yesterday. The village, the village is all them put together, will be there. This is where we give back to the community this is where we help this is where we pay it forward this is where i go to try to right my wrongs the same city that i once ran around in committing crimes and i like to see grow i want to give to the children what nobody could really give to me which is the advice that is needed as a young man or as a young woman growing up in today's world a lot of these kids look up to me i'm able to talk to them even the grown-ups that are just coming out of the system, I'm able to talk to them. One to five, Armstrong High School, Richmond, Virginia. Please come out, show some love, support the children, man. Help give back. Thank y'all for joining me with today's video. When your gang can't save you, that boy gets you up in that cellar. You get to dump it on that ass for what your mouth done said. Hmm, what a gang. Oh, there they come. Damn. <laughs> I love you guys, man. Thank y'all for hanging in here to this point of the, this point of the video. It's Tuesday. I'm going to get back to work. Jump back in there with my guys and get this day wrapped up. But anyways, these jails, detention centers, these prisons, these institutions, they're all just crazy worlds inside of an already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life to all my real ones. And 
awesome real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. And y'all know how we do Salute. Man, a little tight ass shirt, man. I just can't even get my foot swole on. Man. Man, man, man. Whose shirt is this? It's not my shirt. I don't even smell like my sh Not my shirt, man. This shirt is formed to fit somebody else. Got man. Damn. Goes Big Lance again. Make sure you subscribe and check out Big Lance off the yard. Look, there, there he goes. I ain't. I love y'all, man. Salute.